Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses <coughs> on the issues behind the news. Surface gold miner DRD Gold is considering a buyback of shares in support of its long-term shareholders. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer tells us more. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Sharon. DRD Gold CEO Neil Pretorius this week announced that the company would consider a buyback of its shares. Um, how would this work and what benefits would that have? Uh, the benefits are that there are fewer s shares in circulation, so those ones in cir circulation get an added value. So mm -hmm. they want to look after their long-term shareholders. They feel that their short-term gamblers uh, have really ruined their share price. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the right moment, they want to introduce a buyback because they're sitting on spare cash and they're thinking that's perhaps the best way to attract long-term shareholders. They talk about short-term shareholders kicking them like a coke, a dented Coke can. <laughs> it's about time you know, that stopped happening. So I think that... Um, it looks like it's it's being seriously contemplated, but the final decision still has to be taken, and I think it'll, they'll wait for all the analysts to concur that the time is right, because mm. I think it wouldn't be advantageous to go out half cock. I mean, we have seen a lot of buybacks. Uh, last year we saw a lot of buybacks. There's still buybacks taking place by big major companies. It's all done when they feel that uh, with the spare cash they've got, it's probably preferable to reduce the number of shares in circulation and thereby elevate the value of the shares rather than just pay it out in dividends. Mm. And so a small company like DRD Gold is probably more vulnerable you know, the, to the type of short-term traders mm. who can set you down in a, in a market that's depressed. Mm. They're trying to attract the long-term shareholders and they find it difficult to do that. And they want to perhaps have a handful of uh, you know, long-term shareholders that are more satisfied with um, their strategy than just appeal to the market willy-nilly. Mm. Now, speaking of dividends, the company lifted its dividend payout by 10 cents a share um, for the period ended June 30. How did the company perform over this period? Yeah, you know, I mean, you can see that last year, this time we were saying, would they close? You know, <laughs> they had a technology problem. Mm. They didn't know where they were going to solve it. They actually warned the market that, you know, if they couldn't solve this technology problem, closure was in sight. They, they could see that potentially happening. A year later, you know, they're sitting on a lot of cash, generating a lot of cash, paying off debt, and it just shows you how quickly things can change in the market. But it's a great company because we've got these dumps, we've got these tailings dams around you. They've got gold in them. They're specialists at extracting that gold. Because the, uh, the gold has already been mined and it's on surface, the costs are much lower. The margins can be bigger if they get their processing right, which they've been working very, very hard on. So you kill many birds with one stone. You know, you get rid of your mine dumps. It's an environmental plus. You extract the gold. <coughs> you earn foreign exchange for the country. You satisfy your shareholders. And you are removing waste from land that has a value. Mm. And potentially that can be sold off at a later date as mm. well. Once they clear those mine dumps, do they build houses on them? What does well, the government it use it? It, it would um, depend on, on what decisions were taken by town planners at, at that stage. Uh, and they... Um, are very aware of the value that's mm. beneath those dumps, mm. but they've still got a long way to go. Mm. And in fact, they would like to get their hands on more dumps. They tried to get more in the West Rand. Uh, the West Rand wasn't keen on letting them go. So they're dealing with what they've got here, and they are finding more resources. So mm. they're quite happy with um, the way the throughput is increasing at the Erga plant, you know, which was built by Anglo-American very well mm. many years ago. Anglo also made a lot of money out of that. And we can see when conditions are right, it's, it's um, a cash generating business. Mm. Now going back to um, education and environment, um, environment management, uh, what uh, work did DRD do in terms of that? Yeah, I, I like their attitude to their near mind communities. They really believe in education. They know there's a shortfall in maths and science. They've stepped in there and they've put millions of rands you know, behind educating students. They put like uh, 595 pupils um, through the classes in extra math, science, and uh, th th they've got other courses going on, national certificates. And they, you can see they beam with pride because mm. they say they, they, they can see the results. Uh, the, the pass rates are continually rising uh, from the people that come through their system. Suddenly they're doing well at maths and science and it gives them great satisfaction and they feel, you know, potentially maybe uh, these people will be employed in the area mm -hmm. and maybe even by themselves. So 
they're looking after the uh, sort of education side where they really feel passionate, but also they don't want to inhibit um, the lifestyles of nearmine communities through dust from these dumps that they own. Mm. So they're working very, very intensively to try and fully grasp those dumps. And they count, you know, the sort of uh, the dust particles in the air on a regular basis. And I think they were over um, spec or they were over, they exceeded the limit 31 times. And they believe mm. that that's 31 uh, too many, although they were like measurements done over a thousand times. Mm. And they want to eliminate that completely by fully grassing uh, the, these uh, these dumps, mm. you know, once all the processing has been done. Mm. So um, that's also an important thing in an urban area. You know, they feel that that's the thing you have to do if you own these dumps. They hate complaints about dust. Yeah. <laughs> all that dusting. Yeah. <laughs> what will the company's main focus be over the next financial year? Well, it's all, all about uh, balancing the new technology and the old technology, and they succeeded in doing that very well, but we know how vulnerable they are to that. They even spoke of possible closure if it doesn't work, but th th there's just upside coming through now. Th they're getting much better recovery. They're working the two systems together, and uh, they feel they'll probably also report you know, better recovery in the next six months as they go through their paces of putting the old and the new together. Mm. And with all those new maths and science boffins, maybe there's a solution there as well. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much, Martin. Great pleasure, Shannon. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.